So honestly, I think I'm just flipping between like, oh my god, what's going on? And wait, I think I know something. And then, which turns into, just kidding, I didn't actually know what I thought I knew. Hey everyone, my name is Amy and welcome back to Amy Codes. So this week I'll be talking to you about navigating your first week as a new hire software engineer. Um, the reason I'm doing this video is actually because I actually just started a new job. Um, to give you some context, the company is a startup, they do open so source software and they do um, infrastructure type products. Um, but oh my god, it has been like so crazy. Um, like emotionally, I keep on like going between being overwhelmed and excited because like this job, uh, like I'm learning so much and it's I've worked so hard to reach this point. So let's get started. I think tip number one is to stop putting yourself down. Um, I definitely felt this during my first week. Like I would just feel super insecure about not knowing everything I needed to know. I there was a lot of new tools that I had to pick up. There was a lot of new terminology that I had to understand. Um, you are not expected to know everything, especially on your first week. Um, and especially if you're like me and this is your first full-time software engineering job, you just came out of college, um, you definitely don't know enough about what you're doing. Um, it takes time to accumulate all of that knowledge. Tip number two that I have is to understand your coworkers' technical roles. So, are they um, in DevOps? Are they a project manager? Do they work on front end? What projects do they work on? What products do they work on? Um, again, this will take some time to learn, but I definitely think that starting to understand people's roles on your first week is important, especially in terms of uh, question asking, like. Who do I go to help for this specific issue? Like you don't want to, you know, ask your project manager about a DevOps question, like, or about your workplace setup or like dev environment kind of thing. Um, or like you don't want to ask, you know, a front end person about this specific back end service and how it works. Um, so definitely understanding your coworkers roles and what they do is super helpful in terms of navigating who to ask questions. Number three, uh, the third tip I would give is to escalate your questions. What this means is, um, is like have like a chain of command, I guess, to like ask uh, different types of questions. So I'll give you an example. Um, usually when I have a general question, I will go to one of the more junior devs, um, and if they can't answer it, then I'll escalate it to people who have more managerial roles. The reason I don't direct my question immediately to you know, one of the managers or one of the senior devs is because they're usually very busy, and um, depending on the person, sometimes it'll take a bit longer to answer my question. Um, another reason is because, like, I didn't want to constantly pester my the senior engineers um, about like the simpler questions that um, I couldn't quite figure out. Um, and also the junior devs, they're often more equipped to answer these questions because um, they like they just went through this experience as well. Um, and probably understand what you don't understand as well because that's another thing is formulating your questions and knowing how to ask it and that's um, that's definitely a hard thing to do like I sometimes like I don't know I sometimes don't understand what's happening but at the same time I don't know how to ask the question or formulate the question tip number four I would say is definitely clarify the constraints of your task um, I could have done this better in my first week. I like was sitting there struggling, you know, trying to figure out what the constraints of my task were when I just should have asked um, my manager or like who, like whoever assigned me the task. Um, and 
The reason you should do this is because if you don't, you're wasting so much time like trying to solve a problem that isn't actually the problem and you're like going way beyond the scope of your problem and you're like touching things you don't need to be touching and um, it, it just saves so much time if you just like ask early um, and quickly um, about what you're confused about. Um, I don't know that this applies to every problem. So something I definitely knew I was struggling with was just knowing what to ask. Like, I didn't know what I didn't know, so I didn't know how to ask about what I didn't know. So in those situations, what I would do is just sort of like read through the docs or keywords of things that kind of like help me navigate the space of that question, if that makes sense, and then start to formulate my question. Um, there's definitely a lot of adjusting in your first week because like you just don't know anything about the product and there's so much to learn, so many new tools to learn, um, so take your time. Number five is reading whatever documentation your company has either internally or if you're like me and I work at an infrastructure as, a infrastructure as a service product, you should definitely read through the documentation of the product and understanding that as well. Um, yeah, like going into work on the first day, like I had a general idea of what the product was, but not really until uh, I read through all the documentation and played around with the product itself. Um, doing that is really important, especially if you work on, you know, SaaS products, and infrastructure as a service product, like any software type of product, um, because it really helps you kind of navigate the space um, in terms of what you're working on, like a feature or maybe like a base service that everything else depends on. Um, and it just really helps you understand the architecture of your product as well and how to debug things and how to fix things and how to add things. So definitely understand your product um, and read the documentation. So another thing that I didn't do was read through um, my dev environment setup. I kind of like didn't think to do that first um, and I was like struggling to understand how to like test things and other stuff but I guess for me it was like for the current task that I'm working on it didn't really need the full dev environment so I just wanted to turn something out um, but don't don't make my mistake and definitely spend the time to set up your dev environment because after the first week um, things will start picking up and it'll be a lot to set up your dev environment Number six, so, oh my gosh, this piece of advice is so important. You need to write everything down. Um, the reason I say this is because people will be throwing around so many things that you don't understand. Even if you don't understand them, write them down. Like, after I had a conversation, you know, with one of my managers, with one of my coworkers about what I was working on, Literally two seconds later, I would forget what we just talked about and I wouldn't be able to recall whatever terminology it was that I still wasn't familiar with. Um, just having like a log of what you talked about and just having like keywords of things that you can Google, just like having that base point of being able to Google for something is so important. And I definitely would look back at my notes um, I had like a sublime text window open and I would just look at look back at my notes to figure out what to do next, what I was just what I just talked about, what I can look up, things to understand the product more. So write everything down even if you don't understand what just what you were talking about. Number seven may sound odd, but I think it's a pretty good piece of advice and it is do not bring lunch for that week. Um, the reason I say this is because lunchtime is a great time to kind of like wind down, people have their guard down, and it's an awesome time to bond with your coworkers. I personally find it very difficult to ask questions to someone who I don't feel friendly with, and um, lunchtime is a great time for me to you know get friendly with them, get to know them a little, um, ask them how they join, ask them how they join the company, you know like. 
what they're interested in, maybe what their weekend plans are, things like that. It's a very small thing, but I think it made a world of difference in terms of feeling comfortable, asking people questions, um, and being on a more friendly, uh, like, you know, communication basis with them. And finally, number eight, last but not least, is be kind. Um, it sounds really simple, but I just thought it's a good tip to add in there because you're spending so much of your time with these people. It's, you know, whether, like, if you work from nine to five, that's like so many hours that you spend with the same people every single day. Um, you know, say thank you when people help you out, appreciate them for the time they're expending on you because it is a huge investment to bring you as a new hire up to speed and, um, you know, they're taking time from whatever they're doing to be able to help you. Um, and I think just being kind in general as like a general rule is just always wonderful. So I hope you enjoyed those tips on navigating your first week as a software engineer. It's definitely an overwhelming experience, um, but it's also a rewarding experience. It's, a, it's an exciting experience, um, and I hope you enjoy every bit of it. It would be awesome if you could comment down below with maybe some tips you have for navigating your first week as a software engineer things you regret, things you thought you succeeded on, um, and all that kind of stuff. It's super helpful if you subscribe down below, give a like, as well as following my social media outlets. On Twitter, my handle is at the Amy Code, as well as for my Instagram account. All the links are down below again. Definitely tweet me if you have any questions, and I'll see you next time. Bye!